The silence from Ireland has explained, Your Majesty. The Earl of Essex has disobeyed your instructions. He has wantonly ignored them. He did not go north to Ulster after Tyrone. All this time he has been in the south, engaged in fruitless skirmishes against the rebel outposts there. Of the 16,000 men under his command, only 4,000 remain. The others lost, if not in battle, then through disease or desertion. The waste of it. The Earl is where now? He tarries in Dublin, claiming exhaustion and ill health. He seeks your permission to return home. My lord, I forbid you to come out of that kingdom until Tyrone and his garrisons are disposed of. Why have you not prosecuted your campaign against him? You have had ample time, men and ordinance to accomplish it. You defy my authority with your futile adventure in the south, which has decimated my treasury and cost my kingdom dear in human life. Discharge your duty against Tyrone, my lord. Do not let disgrace be your epitaph nor the ignominy of defeat be mine. For be assured, I will not pay the price of that alone. You are my Alpha and my Omega, my lord. No prince ever had such a counsellor. Sir Francis Bacon, Your Majesty. You asked him to attend you. We have reason to be concerned about the Earl of Essex's actions, Sir Francis. As one close to him, we hoped you might give us some insight. Like you, Your Grace, I have always tried to be a moderating influence, tried to stay his impulses, but all in vain, I'm afraid. I fear he has a malady in his mind which has tainted him since birth. Either he is tortured by melancholy and self-doubt, or he acts with such reckless hubris there is no restraining him. At best, the result is inconsistency. At worst, indecision. Well, he has made a decision now, sir. One he will live to regret. He's agreed a truce with the rebel Tyrone. Today we received notice. He has deserted his post. 
together with a legion of his officers. He has offered them knighthoods to secure their loyalty. Given the extremities of his nature, he is not just a danger to himself, but to others. Your Majesty, he must be found, and quickly. His whereabouts are unknown to us, sir. As are his intentions. Leave now, sir, or we'll summon the guard. Forgive my intrusion, Your Majesty. I had to see you. I could not wait. My treaty with Tyrone is not the disgrace your council have you think. They fight us like savages, coming at us through the mist like ghosts, deploying tactics of ambush, of sabotage. Where is the dishonor? In admitting defeat against such a foe is inevitable. Is not Tyrone's threat neutralized by our treaty? His rebellion quelled and bloodlessly at no more cost to your revenue. As ever, your words take the sting out of your actions, my lord. You must be wearied after your journey. Why not repair to your home? Refresh yourself. When we are both more presentable, we can discuss this matter at our leisure. I see now. This is where I belong. I was a fool to stray so far from you. She has dismissed him from the Privy Council, stripped him of his offices of Earl Marshal, Master of the Ordnance, and now his patent on sweet wines is revoked. She's bankrupted him. I'm ruined, Mother. She is as crooked as a wretched carcass! <laughs> <laughs> 